the passenger pigeon was around for six million years. And people remembered how amazing it was that these animals darkened the sky for hours at a time. There's these stories about these giant flocks blocking out the sun and their wings sounding louder than thunder. We developed the techniques to hunt and net these birds and basically kill them all. And then it was really gone. When I was growing up, my mother said when the last one died in 1914, it broke America's heart. It was one of the prideful things that America had to show the world. It was gone. Uh, this book, this is essentially the Bible of Passenger Pigeon. I am currently the lead researcher for the de-extinction project to bring the extinct passenger pigeon back to life. When I say, oh, we'll bring back a passenger pigeon, everyone goes, oh my god, that's like Jurassic Park. And I say, no, no, it's not. Not at all. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I don't think a pigeon is going to, you know, pluck lawyers off of toilets. No. <laughs> So how we're actually going to go about de-extinction, every organism has a unique code in their genes. This one would be good, I think. So these are actual DNA codes from a chunk of a passenger pigeon foot. Now, if you can get DNA, then we can actually make it into a living cell. We're going to sequence its whole genome. We're gonna build from scratch the code that is a passenger pigeon, one gene at a time, compare it to its closest relative. Then we're gonna introduce DNA into the living cell of a band-tailed pigeon. And when you introduce an extinct animal's egg cell into a new mother, then you've changed the game, which has been done. The extinct Iranian ibex was successfully cloned. That was the first de-extinction. This particular case, the animal only lived about 10 minutes, but it was a proof of concept and with further efforts, we hope followed by everything from the passenger pigeon to the Tasmanian tiger. It's one of the most famous human-caused extinctions in the world. Benjamin, the last Tasmanian tiger, died in 1936. It was our direct activity that caused that extinction. For me, biotech is the future of conservation because our meddling is not unnatural. It is what species do. One of the things that we've gotten used to is the horrifying realization that extinction is forever. But what if the new truth is that de-extinction is forever. <laughs>